you're leading a project. When suddenly your lead developer quits, your main client contract gets fired. And you discover that your team is being so obsolete to the technology and not really being aligned with the technology we need to put out. Oh, by the way, your office just burned down. You think that's a nightmare? Think again. This is the real, this is real world project management. How would you handle these curveballs without losing your cool or your job? What if I told you there was ways not to just survive, but thrive in this type of chaos? In today's episode, I will be breaking down some of the most insane project disasters I've faced and exact strategies I use to turn them into success. I ask of you, don't click away. Don't go to another episode. Stay right here because you might be closer to a crisis than you think. Today's tips is really going to help you for your career in this thing that I love, that I hope you fall in love with called project management. You mind if I share a quote with you? I was recently watching this podcast with um, Penny Hardaway and Shaq. And Penny used a quote from Eric Thomas. And he said, so it was so profound. I would like to... Uh, print you a digital copy of it. He said, don't think about the obligation. Think about the opportunity. Again, don't think about the obligation. Think about the opportunity. Eric Thomas. You mind if I share a story with you? Family, when you get in this thing that I love that I definitely hope you fall in love with called project management, there will be twists and turns. There will be ups and downs. There will be moments where you said, I've had enough. You can have this thing back. I'd rather go do something else. But that is the conjunction. I don't know about you, but when I was growing up, there was a little cartoon show. It was saying, conjunction, junction, what's your function? What that was basically saying is that anytime that you put a conjunction in front of anything, everything behind it is no longer valid. But the things that we're talking about moving forward is the progress moving forward. Listen, family, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. This won't be easy. This is no quick rich or I shouldn't say quick rich. This is no quick overnight thing. This takes, as Alan Iverson Iverson says, practice because it does take practice. It takes practice because you're going to have to go through these things. Even when you get to the point in your career where you like, oh, I got this thing uh, down called project management. I am leading my team very effectively, but yet and still you will have barriers. You will have obstacles. You will, what they call and, and scrum, impediments. So today's episode to me is really powerful. First of all, is because I seen that you guys were really loving about the how about stakeholders. So I thought to myself, won't I do something around stakeholders leveraging that same information, but really put a, a true twist on it. If you're new to the episode, I go by the name of ED for you smart and intelligent folks here. It just simply means and I have an eight point framework in in I have a hit point framework, my goal, my mission, my job today, if you allow me to unpack today's title, which is entitled How to Maintain a Positive Attitude and Effectively Solve Problems. Again, how to maintain a positive attitude and effectively solve problems. Point number one, dealing with cross-departmental friction. I'm going to tell you, family, when you're leading a project, you're going to work with people in different departments. It's going to require what they call collaboration. And based off of collaboration, you're going to have to build trust between IT, between compliance, between you name It's just cross-functional. And so what's going to happen a lot of times is you're going to be... (laughs) You're going to have moments where you're just going to feel like, oh, man, I just can't believe that these that we can't come together and collaborate and make it happen. And you start going down what I call victim lane. There's nothing wrong with sitting in what has happened, but don't stay there too long. I'll give you tonight to think it over. But in the morning, I need you to say, hey, this is just part of the journey that I made a decision to be part of. And so I want to give you an actionable item when you're dealing with cross-functional department of friction. Organize a team building exercise. Now, if you're remote, I would recommend um, doing some type of workshop via online 
and identify common goals, get to know people, and establish clear communication protocols between the teams. Point number two, dealing with burnout in high-pressure projects. If you haven't worked a project, a high-pressure project yet, boy, you are in for a treat because it is a treat. At the same time, it can be sour. It's like almost like a gummy bear. If you have ever had a sour gum or a sour gummy bear, it's it's sweet, but it's so sour. You're like, why am I eating this? This is not good. And then you eat another one, and then you eat another one, and so you become accustomed. Or watch this, family. You find a way to be uncomfortable in a excuse me, be comfortable in a uncomfortable situation. I'll say that again. You find a way to be comfortable in a very uncomfortable way. So when you're seeing your team showing signs of burnout due to uh, high stress and work condition, here's an actionable item. All, all today, we are providing action. See, one thing I want to let you guys know, when you tune in to me, when you listen to these episodes, I want to make sure that you're able to walk away with value that if you're a new project manager getting started, that you can implement. If you're a seasoned project manager, you can say, huh, never thought about it this way. Let me see if I can add what I'm already doing and combining it. Because at the end of the day, we have to make sure that our approaches are real life, is pr pragmatic. So here's an actionable step. Conduct one-on-one -on -one check-ins with your team members and your stakeholders. Assess their well-being. Listen to what they're not saying. I love when my mentor told me that and my friend, he said, listen, when you are talking with people, you have to pay attention to what they are not saying. A lot of times people won't really communicate what they're saying and you have to find out when they're dropping clues. And so I know you're not a detective. Also know you're not a lawyer. However, you have to put on those different hats and figure out what is going on. When you set up these one-on-one, you wanna work on finding out where are the stress areas? What is actually going on? How are they feeling? What can you do to assist them through this? Let's move on to point number three. Managing a project with shifting goalposts. Wow. I remember when I had a project and it, it just seems like the, the deadline just kept just being, it, it just kept changing. And it was like one moment we was like, okay, we're going to finish in six months. And then it went to eight months and then it went to a year. And that's because of the organization strategy change midway through the project. So this alter a lot of key objections. Here's a actionable item. I would recommend conducting a rapid assessment of the project aligned with the new strategy. Prepare a presentation showing what can be salvaged from the actual current work and then what needs to change and then make those changes to, the, to your triple constraints, your timeline, your budget, your scope, and of course, your quality. Let's move on to point number two. Managing scope disagreements among stakeholders. One thing I was having a conversation with one of my friends and we were talking about, and I'm actually going to do an episode on this, scope creep versus gold plating. Again, scope creep versus gold plating. See, scope creep is basically you, you're really breaking the scope baseline. So the scope baseline could be, hey, I'm going to McDonald's to get a number one and that's what I want. And then they, and then you get your food and you don't even, that number one that you got there's, I think the number one is a Big Mac. So you get the Big Mac and there's no meat on there. It's just buns and special sauce and you get no fries. You're like, wait a minute, this is not what I ordered. Versus gold plating, gold plating is you keep the scope baseline intact. And then all of a sudden you have some genius on your team is we're going to add some additional features for the customer because I know this would look really good for them. They would appreciate it. And they didn't want that. So I say to you, when you're dealing with stakeholders and having conflicting ideals about what should be included in the scope, one of the things I recommend is that you get sign off from all of these stakeholders that are part of the decision making when it comes to building out your scope. And here's another actionable item. Facilitate a scope prioritization workshop. I know it sounds funny, but it's so true. And the reason why I laugh is because a lot of project managers, they don't do that. They don't have a workshop to get buy-in, to ensure all the stakeholders are actually aligned. And what's unique about this is that when you look at the 49 processes, one of the 49 processes is identify stakeholders. And when you identify stakeholders, you want to be able to have the ability to identify who are the ones that are going to have the input and the buy so you can create what I call 
the actual buy-in for them to want to do, want to be aligned with you when the scope is actually challenging. People are saying, no, we don't need to do this uh, that way and that way. When we all agree, we signed off in a predictive and a predictive approach is more basically saying a waterfall approach and also do a voting type uh, decision. And you could also do ROIs. What's the return on investment if we make this adjustment or versus if we, we stay the same? Let's move on to point number five, managing client indec indecisiveness. It can be really frustrating when your client is consistently changing their mind about the key project elements in which it causes delays to the project. But most of all, it really has an impact on the team. They become frustrated because they fall into almost like a root, a negative routine of saying, here we go again. I already knew this is coming. They're going to change the requirements. So you remember I always talk about the RAID log. So RAID, if you're new, basically a RAID Q log is risk, action items, issues, decisions, and questions. So as those changes, as that client wants to continue to make changes, you want to document everything because what you don't want to happen, especially if you have a contractual obligation in place, that if you don't deliver this project at a certain time, your organization could be fined and the customer could get a reduction on the price of the actual project. You want to document everything. And then when I document, I'm talking about document who was there, when the, with the decision that was made, the date it was made, the time it was made. And I know you're like, man, that's just so much. No, you want to cover yourself and covering yourself and your team. This allows you when you have to go and have those crucial conversations, AKA a difficult conversation with the customer when they're frustrated. Why haven't I, I received uh, my, pro my um, project? I can explain why. So pay attention to that family. Let's move on to point number six. Handling unexpected team members departure in these days and times, especially in these days and times, you're seeing a lot of changes within organizations. That's why I led with, if you listen to the opening where I talked about your lead developer just gave their two week notice. And this lead developer is one of those resources that really was committed. They really delivered on the thing that they said that they were going to deliver. And now you feel stuck because now someone has to pick up the slack and you're thinking, I'm going to hold them accountable, like how that lead developer who just left, but you can't, you have to give them as they would say, or as my grandma would say, give them grace for a moment. And you have to work with them to get them up to speed because the more you get frustrated, the more you get irritated, it's going to make it harder on them because now they're going to feel like it doesn't matter what they deliver to you. It's always going to be an issue. So you want to have patience and work with them. Here's an actionable item. You want to have a meeting right away and employ, and if you can possibly before that lead developer leaves, get as much documentation as you can assess what team members can really come in and take the, those key responsibilities. If it's two, if it's three, you need to make sure that somebody's in place to help you bring this up, uh, get them up to speed as soon as possible. Point number seven, dealing with interpersonal conflicts among what we don't talk about. And that's why I talk about a, a lot here on the, in these different episodes is conflict. Conflict is one of those things that you're going to have if you decide to be a project manager. And it's not you always creating the conflict. It's your stakeholders having conflict. Maybe there's bad blood. Maybe they felt, who is this new guy leading the project? We're going to, we're going to make it challenging for this resource. So you want to be able to identify the personnel that is having these conflicts. And then you want to schedule one-on-ones with these individuals. You want to separately understand their issues. If it's too, if, if their issues is unresolvable, you want to immediately take the next step. The next step is talking with each one of their managers. If you can't get any solutions there, you go straight to HR. You don't have time to play these games of going back and forth with people and people disrupting, or I should say stakeholders disrupting your meetings because you're there to do a job. You're there to be, to execute on the thing that was identified as being a project for the organization. Don't waste time in escalating. And when you escalate, I wasn't even, I wasn't even going to share this, but I'm going to, I want to over deliver today. When you make the decision to go to their direct manager or even go higher to HR, you want to make sure you have documentation in place. You want to make sure that you lead with solutions. Hey, these are the solutions that 
we actually did and it did not work. Now I'm escalating because now I see it's out of my hands. These two has to either get removed or one of them has to be removed from the project and we need someone else in their place. Point number eight, dealing with the pressures to cut corners. Listen, you may be asked to skip uh, corners and you want to make sure that you document it. Reason why you want to document this is because of the potential risk or consequences that can happen, not just to you, but also to your project team. You want to be able to present what I would recommend is presenting a pre presentation showing, hey, this was what is going to happen if you do not stay, if you do not stick with the plan of of what we agreed on and you try to cut corners and find a cheaper or a, a less robust way, this is going to have a impact to the quality of the project that we're delivering to the customer. So we want to make sure that if this is the decision, if the project sponsor makes that decision, then we want to document it. So just in case, again, being able to cover ourselves. Here's one of my bonuses I have for you. Managing internal restructuring impact. Imagine your company just says, hey, we are doing a restructuring. And what ends up happening the majority of the time, I've been part of a lot of these restructuring is it creates uncertainty within the team. They lose focus temporarily because now they're concerned about them. They're concerned about, hey, will I have a job tomorrow? Will I have a job in a month? And so you want to find ways to bring in one of the things I recommend as an actionable item is, is reach out to upper management, reach out to leadership and see if they can come speak to your team and to reassure, hey, no, we're going to keep this team intact and we're going to keep everything together and prepare a impact assessment considering various scenarios, meaning if you have resource constraints because you lose two of your resources and you want to stay in front of this, you do not want to get behind this because again, your team will lose focus. They will literally what they call quiet quitting because they're just like, oh, I'm waiting to hear, to get that call to say, hey, come into the HR office. We want to talk about something or a Zoom call to say, all of a sudden you're talking to your manager and all of a sudden someone from HR pops up. So you want to make sure family that you are getting ahead of this and that you can get buy-in from your executives as your executive team to reassure your team that, hey, we're not going anywhere. We're going to finish this project because we're how far we are in it. And they have, and they give you that proper support. And my last and final bonus family is dealing with critical skills, uh, I should say critical gap skills, because what can happen a lot of times midway through the project, you realize that your team lacks crucial skill sets necessary for the success. How are you going to respond? One of the things that I got in trouble for this before, as I should say, I got my hand slapped in the comments where they said, they should be paying me more if you decide to do this. What I said was, is that, if you are the project manager, you may have to step in and do skills that are not with not of your job duty. Now, I will push back and say, if you've ever filled out a job application, at the bottom of it, somewhere within the job application, it, it will say um, other duties may apply. And so you can't think with that mindset. You always want to think with a, a, a mindset of, hey, I'm going to go in and find a resolution to whatever the problem is. If we don't have the resource, Let's see how we can all come together and figure this out. So I always recommend conducting a detailed skill assessment for the entire team. And you want to build this based on what are you actually doing within the project. Don't go say, well, he doesn't know how to do Excel and his job is coding. Don't do that. I've seen other project managers do that. And I'm like, why did you do that? Like that has no relevance to that actual stakeholder. So let me give you my three closing remarks, family, and I'll let you be on your way. First closing remark, dealing with cross departmental front friction. Like I said before, you really want to organize team building exercises, conducting, building more personal relationships with your team and leading with a positive attitude. And again, you're not going to get that right. Trust me. I believe that I'm one of the most positive people, but I also get it wrong. I get frustrated. I get irritated because I'm like, why are they making it so hard? Why are they getting in their own way? of the project because all we have to do is collaborate and we'll be able to work through this. Stop sending emails, 13 emails back and forth. Why not get on a call? Stop hiding behind the emails. I'm sorry, I just went into a rant, but I'm being dead serious though, family. It's important that when you start seeing a lot of emails and all, all these things, you wanna get in front of that. Just set up a meeting so we can walk through it. Point number two, 
handle unexpected team member departures. Listen, you can plan as much as you want to. Sometimes you're not going to know when someone decides that they, they're going to move to another organization. And so when that happens, you need to stay calm and figure out what we need to do to uh, backfill this resource, or if we're not going to get a backfill, how can we as a team pitch in to help out? And the last and final thing is when you're managing client indecisiveness, creating a RAID Q log and making sure that you're documenting those decisions appropriately. Family, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I go by the name of ED, and I truly appreciate it allowing me another opportunity to deliver today's episode. Until next time, I'm out.